Just he had a good day. So we'll just start. Let us pray. Father, we give you praise. We honor you because you're good to us. We thank you for your mercies, your goodness, your help all over us. We say be glorified in the name of Jesus. Father, we are here tonight. Again, we ask that you would teach us yourself. That very thing you would want us, Lord. You open our hearts and our ears and our eyes to see and behold and get a grasp of them. Nothing are we going to miss in the name of Jesus. We ask that in your word we encounter you. You we encounter us like never before in the name of Jesus. And we will get hold of our heritage as we open our eyes and our ears and our hearts in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen and amen and amen. Amen. Um, thank God for an awesome joining for the study. So tonight we're studying about the we are studying about we are studying about um, Noah from the book of Genesis chapter seven and chapter eight, which we're going to be reading, and we trust God to teach us Himself. Amen. So I'll just um just hold on. I'm trying to open the Bible. Yeah. Genesis 7. And the Lord said to Noah, Come with all your household into the ark, for I have seen you to be righteous, upright, and right in, and in right standing before me in this generation. Of every clean beast you shall receive and take with you seven pairs, the male and his mate, and of beasts that are not clean, a pair of each kind, the male and his mate. Also of the birds of the year, seven pairs, the male and the female, to keep seed, their kind of life over all the earth or land. For in seven days, I'll cause it to rain upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. And every living substance and things that I've made, I will destroy, blot out and wipe away from the face of the earth. And Noah did all that the Lord commanded him. Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters came upon the earth or land. And Noah and his son and his wife and his son's wives with him went into the ark because of the waters of the flood, of clean animals and of animals that are not clean, and of birds and of fowls and everything that creeps on the ground. There went in two and two with Noah into the ark, the male and the female as God had commanded Noah. And after the seven days, the flood waters came upon the earth or land. In the year 600 of Noah's life, in the 17th, in the 17th day of the second month, that same day, all the fountains of the great deep were broken up and burst forth and the windows and the floodgates of the heavens were opened. And it rained, and it rained upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. On the very same day, Noah and Shem, Ham and Japheth, the sons of Noah and the Noah's and the three wives of the son with them went into the ark. They and every beast according to its kind, all the livestock according to their kinds, every moving thing that creeps on the land according to its kind, and every fowl according to its kind, every winged thing of every sort. And they went into the ark with Noah, two and two of all flesh, in which they there were the breath and spirit of life. And they and they that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God had commanded. As God had commanded, sorry. And the Lord shut him in and closed round the door round about him. The floor that is the damper of rain was 40 days upon the earth, and the waters increased and bore up the hack, and it was lifted high above the land, and the waters became mighty and increased mightily upon the land, and the ark went gently floating upon the surface of the waters, and the waters prevailed so exceedingly and were so mighty upon the earth and all the high hills upon the old sky were covered. In fact, the waters became 15 cubits higher as the high hills were covered and all flesh ceased to breathe that moved upon the earth, fowls and birds, animals, wild beasts, all swarming and creeping things that swam and creep upon the land and all mankind, everything on the dry land, in whose nostrils where the breath and the spirit of life died. God destroyed, blotted out every living thing that was upon the face of the earth. Man and animals and the creeping things and the birds of the heavens were destroyed, blotted out from the land 
only Noah remained alive and those who were with him in the ark. And the waters prevailed mightily upon the earth or land. 150 days, that is five months. We are reading chapter eight. And God earnestly remembered Noah and every living thing and all the animals that were with him in the ark. And God made a wind blow over the land and the water sank down and abated. Also the fountains of the deep and the windows of the heavens were closed. The gushing rain from the sky were che was checked and the waters receded from the land continually at the end of 150 days. The water had finished, diminished on the 17th day of the seventh month. The ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat in Amania, and the mortars continued to diminish until the tenth month. On the first day of the tenth month, the tops of the high hills were seen. At the end of another forty days, Noah opened a window of the ark which had made, and sent forth a raven, which kept going to and from until the waters were dried up from the land. Then he sent forth a dove to see if the waters had decreased from the surface of the of the ground, for the dove found no resting place on which to roast. And she returned to into the ark for the waters year. Sorry, for the waters were yet on the face of the old land. So he, he put forth his hand and drew her to him into the ark. He waited another seven days and again sent forth and dove sent and dove and again sent forth the dove out of the ark. And the dove came back to him in the evening and behold, in a month was a newly sprouted and uh, in her mouth was a newly sprouted and freshly plucked olive leaf so no one knew that the waters had subsided from the land hallelujah then he waited another seven days and sent forth the dove but she did not return to him anymore in the year 601 of Noah's life on the first day of the first month, the waters were dried up from the land and Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked and behold, the surface of the ground was drying. And on the 27th day of the second month, the land was entirely dry. And God spoke to Noah saying, go forth from the ark, you and your wife and your son and your wives with you. Bring forth every living thing that is with you of all all be flesh, birds and beasts, and every creepy thing that creeps on the ground, that they may breed abundantly on the land and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. And Noah went forth, and his wife and his sons and their wives with him. After being in the ark one year and ten days, every beast, every creeping thing, every bird, and whatsoever, whatever moves on the land went forth by family out of the ark. And now built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean four-footed animal and of every clean fowl or, or bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. When the Lord smelled this pleasing odor, a scent of satisfaction to his heart, the Lord said to himself, I will never again, I will never again curse the ground because of man, for the imagination, the desire of man's art is evil and wicked from his youth. Neither will I ever regain smite and destroy every living thing as I have done while the earth remains, sea time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. Hallelujah. Who is excited tonight? Hmm. Please, if you know you're excited, please let us know what's you by an emoji on the chat box. We are excited tonight to learn our God's bit together. Please let's train an emoji if you're excited. Okay, so good. It's only standing your stabula is excited. Okay, no, what no problem. We we'll just move. We move. <laughs> okay, so please. We are we're going to be learning together. If you have anything you would like to share. Um, we are learning together. Don't see me as just the speaker, please. Let every one of us be a speaker to this occasion of Catch the Fire. Hallelujah. So I'm very sure we've heard several times, even while I remember while we're still young about the story, you know, the story and all that. That's when I've been hearing about the man, Noah, God asked him to build an ark and all that. And it's been a story that we've heard I read all over again. But these are the highlights that I was able to pick from the life of Noah after reading through, and we trust God to help us open and expand our minds to learn from his lifestyle. 
And that was the fact that God could trust a man like Noah to continue the generation of man. God could trust him to pass on God's righteousness. Please, I want to ask, why, why will it be possible that it's only Noah that is in the whole of the earth that was righteous, that only him, at least God cannot lie, it was only Noah that was found faithful, that was righteous. <laughs> I've been asking the question that, ah, what happened? Noah, only this man stood out and he was, as the world was going on, he was also journeying with God and he didn't make, it didn't affect him in any way. There was no kind of excuse for Noah to say, things are difficult. Ah, we need to join them in line. We need to do, he stood out. God testified about him that he was the only one that was righteous and holy. That's so amazing as in like in this whole of Nigeria, God now say, okay, it's only Sister BC that is righteous. So how? How was now able to measure up to that standard? Like, he, he used to like, please, I need to, I, I know I'm going to see the God because it's really amazing. Like <laughs> one man in the whole of Nigeria. No, the whole, whole world actually, not the country. I think it's a, in the whole world, in America, in Russia, in Ukraine, in, so is that massive, just one man. One man was the only one that was able to align to the standard of living of God. Like, I'm very sure then there would have been churches, I'm just imagining like in our time, there would have been a lot of churches, there would have been a lot of pastors, there would have been a lot of prophets, there would have been a lot of, but God would, God pretends with Noah to say, this is the only one that is righteous and holy. God could sense and pick a man to continue his image, to continue the generation, his agenda. A man that carries his image, that carries his breath. The original creation was sustained because God found a man like Noah. Can we get to this level? Yes, we can because we have the breath of Christ in us. We have the image of Christ. We have the capacity of Christ. So we are co heirs with him. So, and he has given us the Holy Spirit in exchange again. In, in, he has given us the Holy Spirit. He said, I am going. I will ask the Father to send you the Holy Spirit. I need to go. So we have all it takes to maintain the standard that Noah lived up to. Like him and his family, God chose to say this guy is righteous and holy. Wow. If you count the number, so that means, wow, this is so, this is so great. And it kept busting my heart, kept busting my heart to say, how did Noah get to this level? How did he get to the level to the extent that he closed his eyes, his heart, his entirety? In all that he has, he closed it against the world and he focused on Jesus. And he kept living with God every day of his life. He was living in God's presence. He was working with God. And one, the, Noah reminded me of Enoch. Enoch that walked with God to the extent that God saw that, that this man cannot taste death. So this is a, a challenge to us that we need to, we need to, key into the capacities that we have. We need to keep into the capacities of the breath. We were created in the image and likeness of God. We were created in the image and likeness of God and we have the strength, the capacity to push through this world. He wants, he wants a partner in us and that's why he created, he created animals, he created plants, he created every other thing. I mean, he took in days to create every other thing but he chose to create man in, a, in his image and likeness and he gave us authority dominion noah lived up to the standard god wanted him to live can god trust us can god trust our lives can god trust the abilities in us can he look down in us to say oh this my child is running with me I, I can't miss him. He can't miss me. He has not missed me. I've never missed him. That was the story that was written about Noah. That was the journey of Noah on this earth. You know, 
if you we know how terrible the world was then and you could relate to it right now that it wasn't like there was something different like okay it wasn't happening during the time of noah it wasn't it was all we could ever record about the world no matter how rotten the world is right now noah ex experienced that he went through all of that and still god counted him to be a righteous and holy man he could trust him to continue a, a generation that he knew that noah was was a standard to the, to God's creation. He didn't allow anything to corrupt him. He didn't corrupt anything. He didn't allow anything to corrupt him, and he was able to continue with the agenda of God. You know, when you read through the story of the children of Israel, like, there will be some time that they will forget about God. Even the generation of the children that were born, then they will say, you know, the story of Gideon. Gideon said, "Boy, you've heard now. We've heard story that God did this, God did that, and all that." There was no continuous. There was no man to continue the agenda of God that time, God could not find a man. So it's, it's, um, it's a challenge for us this night that God needs need just one person. And if that person can just be you and I, he's good to go. He's good to go. He's good to roll out his will and agenda. He doesn't need the whole earth. He just needs a man that will stay, that he will look down to say, this is a man after my heart is righteous and willing and I pray the Lord is going to help us. God saw his likeness maintained in Noah. He maintained the creation and he knew that once he, he gets Noah, his creation is just as perfect as when he was when he created man. When he was when he created man. So, so powerful. So, so powerful. So, so powerful. Wow. <laughs> so what I was able to Friend, I think what Noah did was, <laughs> he, I think he kept his focus. He kept the focus on God because in the book of Cal Colossians 1, he said that we should set affection on things above and things in God. Although those things were happening in Noah, there was fornication, there was stealing, there was fraud, there was killing of people, using men for ritual, unfaithfulness, and all of that during Noah. But Noah kept his focus kept his gaze the truth is we all have the capacity to stand through in the world we carry the breath and the, the seed of god you have the seed of god in us he cannot sin as according to the book of john our first john our focus must be on the things of god we that with that we can always align with his will any moment will not be shifted will not will not be moved by come what's may Come what's me. I pray the Lord be help us in Jesus' name. So another thing, please, if you have contribution, do drop on the chat box. So whenever you feel like you can't go anymore, you're tired, it seems things are just turning upside down, you're discouraged. Can you remember Noah? How he was able to cope, I was able to stand. I was able to keep running the race irrespective of what the situation was because at that time, the angel, the said sons of God came down to be sleeping with men. It was that terrible. It was that bad. So it wasn't like it was good for Noah at that time. And we could even see from the moment of... Um, um, so it was that bad. There was no excuse. But Noah just stood his ground to say, I am living for God. I am living for God. So let's let's learn from Noah. Let his story always encourage us whenever it feels like I can't hold on anymore. It seems like you're discouraged and also I can remember a Noah, a Noah that stood for God in the corrupt world. Another thing was Noah was absolutely an obedient man. <laughs> he had absolutely strictly to all the instructions he was given, even when he requires a whole lot like when I was looking at the assignment that God gave me, after I gave him the, the measurement of the ark, he gave him the type of the wood he was supposed to use. It wasn't just an ordinary wood. He said, do this, do this, and all that. But Noah, in all of that, has the capacity. Just went ahead. All, all he wanted to do was to live and please God. I think what Noah did was that he loved God because when you love God, nothing will come in between you. 
you will see his assignment as too cumbersome. You will just obey. Even when it has to do with dragging yourself to obey, you have to get to that extent. Like Noah was absolutely obedient. Like I saw that he had to build the ark by measurement, the kind of wood, the kind of everything. And then the fact that he has to look for all species of animals, both the white, the simple, and all that male and female. I, I, I from except I didn't get what God instructed Noah about because he said he should look for some kind of each of the animals. Wow, that was a massive kind of. So I, I didn't later get time to make research, uh, make research on how long it took Noah to get to get this thing done, but he did it. He did it. It was a huge kind of assignment, but he went all the way, all the way, because this was a man that had made up his mind to love and please God and obey and honor him. He was going to take a lot from Noah. He was going to take his time, his energy, his savings, his money, his funds, his relationship with his family because he would not have time. He was, he was going to take him everything but Noah did it. He, 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 he was going to go all out. I'm very sure he would first study about the animals. How can I sustain this kind of animal? Which weather works for him? The food, everything, what to sustain and all of those things. Wow. It was a huge assignment. But Noah went ahead. And there was no record of Noah questioning God because then, I think before then, there has never been a record of rain or something. But he, once he heard God, he was willing to go all the way. He was willing to go all the way. He was willing to sacrifice his life. I think this was the kind of act that Jesus had. That even when we, we, we're going astray, we know, we, we know what to, be, to die for, he went all out for us. So Noah has the large heart like that of God, like that of Jesus. He, he, when God hands over assignment to us and he feels like, God, I can't do this alone. Can we look at the life of Noah and be encouraged already? Because it was recorded with God to Noah that he obeyed. That he, he was just like, he just had God, okay, God, okay. And then the next thing, just like you, you, you had your face, you had, maybe you are talking face to face with somebody. God says, okay, do this. And then he turned and they started doing the work. There was no time. Have there been assignments and God proposed upon your life that it seems like it seems so, 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 so <laughs> on, you can't, you, you've never seen anybody does that before. You've never, you, 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 you're running a, about for money and all that. Can God see the readiness and the speed of obedience? in our life to keep running to satisfy the will and desires of God. Of course, Noah would have an agenda, but he let go of those agenda and he made them by desire because the creator called him. Creator called him to come and work for him. Hmm. Noah was a great man like a perfect example that i can't even imagine but we trust god that if we see we could see and that's why all these lessons were noted and written down so that we, we can be as encouraged we can be encouraged that this is these are men that were willing to go all the way all the way for god because they knew that they were created and made for him, not for themselves. Please, how old was Noah when the rain started? Does anybody know knows how old Noah was? How old was Noah when the rain started? Anybody? But I for Lucy Vaiti. Hey Jesus. How old was Noah? <laughs> Good. Thank you, Sister Subo. It was 600 years. It was 600 years. <laughs> 600 minus 90. Oh my God. So, the so it was 600 years. And God 
Hey, <laughs> good. And then another thing that I want us to know that whenever God gives instructions, we <laughs> wanted to write something. Okay, whenever God gives instructions, it's not. It's a win-win thing. It's not a selfish God that works only or looks after Himself. He 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 gives instructions to guide us, to keep us, and for our own sake. You know, that um, Genesis chapter 7, that Genesis chapter 7 from verse 16, from verse 16, records the fact that, verse 16 says, and they, and they that entered male and female of all flesh went in as God had commanded, and the Lord shut him in and closed round about him, like he was made secure because he obeyed, he was instructed. There's a probability that Noah did have obedience, but his obedience was to bait something, was to secure him and to make him an episode of continuity for human race according to the agenda of God. So sometimes when God even instructs us, we might not understand, we might not add up together. Can we understand the fact that it is purposeful for his will and then for our own good? Even when he has to take a whole lot from us, even when he has to take like, God, I'm doing it tired, I'm doing it dragging myself, but trust me, all that God is giving us is for our own good. The obedience is to secure us and to lock us into his will and desires continuously. Imagine Noah didn't do, he would have, he would have, um, he would have um, been destroyed with his family, his household. And it, 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 it doesn't take, after all, it took God seven days to create the world. It doesn't take God anything to create the world again. But Noah obeyed and it was a whole lot of um, advantage for him. Sometimes God gives us instructions just to guide us and secure us from perils, evils, and loom of destructions from things that sometimes you just feel like leave that place. Sometimes you just feel like it's a new season. Don't do this, do that. It's for our own sake. It's not because God is just because the tax master. He just wants to give instruction and give round. So we should recognize the fact that He's faithful and just. He looks for, out for us. So whenever there's an instructions, you might not add it up. You might not understand. But hey, trust me. Can you trust? Can you trust God that He is using that for a reason and for a purpose? And for a reason and for a purpose. And like I said, obedience is very key and a currency to spend as you work with God. You can't work with God if you can't obey Him. It doesn't add up. It does not add up to carry God's word and say, ah, I'm God's child, though, and this. We need to live a life of absolute obedience for us to fully enjoy and enter into that covenant of, of peace. Sometimes some people just obey partly. We need to obey continuously and consistently. Like continuously and consistently. We could see Jonah. Jonah was a prophet. Like he was all my, part of the minor prophet. God said, oh yeah, go to Ninefil, go and preach to these people. Ah, said this God, I'll go there. Go and tell them that if they don't repent, oh, I'll destroy them. I'll do all of this. Thing. Said this God, I know, I know you are merciful. Now you know answer, you will still restore. So why should I go there? He ran away. And God said, You are still going to do this assignment. And he was swallowed for three days until he was he repented in the fish stomach. And then he was taken to the to the place where he was to do his. I mean, half obedience is not good. We need to absolutely obey God all days of our lives. King Saul, King Saul, God said he should go to Amalekah like, and kill everyone, everybody that is there. What did he do? He kept fat or rants or sin, all those things that feels that he can bribe God. He kept it and even kept the king. And because of that. Because of that, his kingdom was torn apart because of our obedience. We should walk in obedience to God. Lot's wife, don't look back, don't look back until she turned into a pillar of salt. You know, Lot was also a righteous man. How did I know he was a righteous man? It was because when Abraham was negotiating with God, that God, when God told him, I want to go and destroy Nineveh, and he was like, I uh, wasn't sorry, Nineveh. <laughs> Sodom and Gomorrah, sorry. Sodom and Gomorrah. 
He said, what if you see 50 righteous by said I will preserve? What if you see 30 until you negotiate? So that, that, that testifies to the fact that uh, Lot was a righteous man. And to the fact that, and Lot was also a good example, but it's just that some, it didn't work well. It didn't work well. I don't know how his relationship with God ended like that. So, because in the corrupt world, as Sodom and Gomorrah was corrupt, it was recorded that his four virgins were, his four daughters were still virgins. It was, it's not easy to maintain like that. So God, um, Lot was a, was a righteous man. But unfortunately, Lot's wife turned to shout love so because of disobedience. So we should walk in absolute obedience to God. Anytime God is giving us instructions, it's for our own good, it's to make us good, it's to make us contain his will and desires, to fully enjoy the capacity of God. Not because God wants to give instructions or God wants to just want wake up and does whatever he feels with his power or with his creation. No, because he has a good and perfect plan. For yourself, for I know the thoughts I have towards you, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to bring it to an expected end. So God has an agenda. And if you don't walk in his path or we don't listen to him, there's no way, there's no way you would enjoy his obedience that can make us unlock the wheels and all that God has packaged for us. So let's cultivate the habit of walking in absolute obedience with God. If, if, if we make up our mind, we could see we've been encouraged to the life of Noah. If you make up our mind, it's something that we can outrightly do by working with him. Then, please, oh, don't let us, don't let it be only new. What, what were the highlights for us? Please, let's drop a comment. Yeah, we are both here to learn, please. And if you want to speak, you can unmute. You can, you can raise your hand or mute yourself to speak for us to learn together from this scripture and this powerful man, Noah. Hmm. It was not a prophet, it was very powerful. It was just a child of God. Hmm. Powerful. Then Genesis chapter 7 from verse 23, we could read that. And God destroyed every living thing that was upon the face of the earth. Man and animals and the creeping things and the birds of the heavens were destroyed from the land. Only Noah remained alive and those who were with him in the ark. So what, what, what I got from that passage is, one with God is majority. Our God's side is the safest side to be. You know, there might be pleasures in this world, but they are temporal. There might be things you want to hold on to say, ah, but people of this world are enjoying, but hey, God's side is the safest. No matter how attractive, the other sides are, or whatever options are available, God is the only internal and true God, and he will give us the best. Like I said, he has a good in mind the other side leads to there because there's nothing there are just two sides isn't that god's side or the kingdom of darkness or the devil's side and the devil is basically three agendas to steal to keep to destroy irrespective of how fine how glamorous those um options my seems like let's know that god's side is always and will always be the best will always and will always be the best. So don't let us be deceived by anything. Let us remain with God. He might not understand. He might not add up. He might not have it all our requests, all our agenda. I'm very sure if we, if we had the privilege to meet Noah and explain what were those things, do, does it mean that God answers all your prayer? Does it mean you don't have challenges? Of course, there are a lot of challenges. How would he maneuver through this, those rotting, the, the rotting world that time? It would have had a lot of challenges. So God's side is always the safest side. He's, this world is full of emptiness. It's full of death. It's full of temporal things that cannot last. But when you are with God, you are secure. You are safe. His agenda is the best. And that's what we are even created for. Imagine we, you know, you're, you're putting on a, a dress of somebody that is older than you, you know, it will be oversized. Or you're putting on the dress of somebody that is younger than you, you know, it will, it will, it will give you discomfort. You will even tear it. That's, that's any other plan. That's how it is on our body. It doesn't fit us. It's more than us. It's oversized. But when you stay on God's side, it's just perfectly for us. Because that's what, you just say, like, I'm putting a round peg 
in a round hole or a round square peg in a square hole because we were made for that plan. So let's stay with God. It is through him that we can enjoy life and align into his divine purpose. There's no other way. There's no other way. Then, please let's talk. Oh, don't let it be only me. Oh, ah, ah. See, see men and, and daughters of God. Eh? They decide to keep quiet. They don't want to contribute. Let's learn together. It was great to see that the act protected Noah and the act is the representative of Jesus. The only way to be saved from this situation. That is it. That's it. The, the, I said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to, comes to the Father except through me. Any other way is fake and it's deceit and it lies. So Jesus is the only way. That's the only way that you can have. And in him there is safety, and that's the only option. Then reading through chapter 8. Thank you, Sister Wumi, for that contribution. Then chapter 8, verse 8, then he sent for a dove to see if the waters had decreased from the surface of the ground. You know, it took, the, it, we, were, we recorded the fact that <laughs> by the time Noah stepped out of the, out of the ark, it was already 601. That's the whole year. In fact, this scripture, um, this version specified the, uh, the amount of time. It said one year and 10 days for Noah and his household to stay in that ark, obeying and aligning to the will of the Father. It was that consistent. It was that faithful. It was that a God. So it was, it was a long period. It wasn't a thing of ah, three months. Of course, it doesn't take God to do whatever he wants to do. In seven days, he has opened up every ground, has opened up everywhere water. God created water, busted out. And before we know it, every living thing that was outside the ark were all gone. But verse 8 encouraged me to see the fact that Noah took, walked with God. Like he didn't just decide that, ah, I'm tired already. The rain should have stopped. He kept walking, stepping, taking a step by step. First sent a raven, he first he sent a dove. To be sure that, okay, let me see. What is God saying now? What is he saying? Is it yet time? Should we step out? Even when it seems that the, door, the, the, the rain has gone down, he was still walking the walk. He was still patient with God. He was still listening to what God has to say. He was still taking the step at a time. It was We might have heard God's voice. We might have heard him. We might have asked him. Yeah, and say do this, do blah blah blah. But do we do we work with his timing and agenda still, even when we are so clear of what he's calling us to, or even those periods that were not clear? Do we do we take it a step at a time? Do we take it a step at a time? Do we wait for us to see the seed? Noah waited till it was time for God to instruct them to really say it is time to come out. If you read from that verse eight to verse eight to ten, then he sent forth a dove to see if the waters had decreased from the surface of the ground. But the dove found no resting place on which to roast, and she returned to him in the ark, for the waters were yet on the surface of the whole So he, he put forth his hand and drew her to him into the ark. He waited another seven days and again sent forth the dove out of the ark, like. Noah was patient. He was working the work with God. He didn't rush out to say, ah, I'm tired already. The, the rain must have, because the, of course, he would have stopped hearing the sound of papa, 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 rain and all of those things. He must have had, but he didn't rush out of those process, that process of waiting for the rain to actually stop, for God to be done with what he has to be done. And then that verse 11 of chapter, he said, and the dove came back to him in the evening and behold, in her mouth was a newly sprouted and freshly plucked olive leaves. So no one knew that the waters had subsided from the land. What do we look at for signs before we go out? Do we look at for instructions? Do we look out for God to speak to us? Do we look out for what God is actually saying, perceiving? Because this is a way no one could, no one could sense how God was journeying with, journey, with his agenda, with his agenda of this water thing, the rain and all of that. He was working with God. He was going all the way. He was in a hurry. He didn't rush out to say, God, oh, uh, 
yeah, let's just go out. I feel the rain is fast. I feel the rain. Is, it was just working. It, it, at every moment of our life, do we wait for God's signs? Do we wait for his agenda? Do we wait for him to say, son, daughter, go ahead, step into this um, season. I think it is time to journey out of this season. So I think he said, it was focused on and looking at for when the rain would stop. It didn't just get so used to the act and we assigned to that space so amazing. As seasons and as seasons out of life, it's not for us to set it there, it's for us to learn and become what God has for that particular time and season and then move ahead. So good. I like your perspective. I, mean, I didn't I wasn't even looking at that. So good. Thank you for sharing. That's why it's good to share many perspectives to God's word too. And that thing that God has deposited upon your heart, please talk it out so that we can learn from your talk by the spirit of God. Like that perspective that is that sister Demi you raise now in fact it wasn't the first person i was looking at so now i was not comfortable at that season like ah it's good though i'm enjoying enjoying i've been here for one year i've been here for six months i've been here for this one i feel this is how god wants me to say but god is saying okay it's time to move on okay it's time to go to the next agenda okay it's time to do the next thing that i have on my heart for you so let's look out for the signs. Don't let us get comfortable at a particular stage. God wants to show us beautiful and mighty things, but we need to walk with him. And you know, this our father is a gentleman. He's a very gentleman. He doesn't force, just give you signs and shows you love and say, let us go. Can you can we work together? Because Bible says can two work together except they agree. No, they won't be able to work together. So we need to work together with the father by working like he meant. We need to look out for signs. What, what is God saying per season? What are you saying now? What is he saying? It's not, and that's why we talk about new wine. You can't pour a new wine into an old wine because it will, you know, it, it, it's the, the, old, the old wine container. It's already expanded, it's near brokenness so we can't we can't continue to run with the idea that god has given us some fine if it's still relevant why not if not but if god is saying butter if god is saying now we need to move we need to move from this family to this family i think i have something more to do with you you know in the um, timothy when he was talking about being a being a vessel on and to honor and to honor. So it's like ready and prepared. There's a, a little person that says, ready and prepared for every good works. Is God prompting us to say, okay, fine, I, mean, I know you are in this season. Can we just quickly do this? Can we have been able to do this and all that? Can we listen to say, God, I'm all here? Or you just want to say, I'm, God, I'm just fine here. Let's just be good. I'm good here. And I want to and I want to stay here. Let's be sensitive to what God is saying past season. Noah is another man whose heart could God could trust. He was the one automatically responsible for teaching the new breed of humans about life and particularly about God and instructions. Can God trust our heart? My heart is such a big yes. I mean, so good. Like God trusted one to continue with the creation he has made. The original image, like uh uh, pain. Can God trust our hearts? The state of our hearts is very critical when it comes to working with God. He's not, he said, I do not take pleasure in just bunch of and sacrifices. Obedient, absolute obedience. I work with the Father. What's the state of our heart? Are we need to go all the way? Like God already knew Noah was not going to stop. He knew he was going to go all the way. He knew the state of his heart. He knew this was a man that loved him so much and will be willing to do all that is committed into his heart. I pray the Lord will help us that each time he wants to look for someone, he will see us, he will find in us his image so that we can carry another of him. You know, and when friends pray, that word, that rema, that um, Mr. Femi, sorry, sorry, I'm not, I don't have the intention to match the name. Mr. Femi, when he was to say, when you come to fellowship, God is looking for his spirit in you, another God in you. Can he can he can he can he trust us to that level where 
you quickly need to do an assignment and you can see, ah, ah, um, it be with me, sister, it be with me, I did me, ah, my daughter. Can you quickly go to village, this, 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 or even the next neighbor, it doesn't have to go to that village. Can we trust him? Can he trust our heart to deliver that? Because he, he, he already carries his spirit and his image and represents him on this earth to make this kingdom our God. And another thing that we can control through our obedience and work with God is that we can move God to do, to do thing, unimaginable thing. Unimaginable thing. We can make him to do unimaginable thing. Like God vowed in John chapter 8, verse 20 to 21, that God vowed through a man and his obedience. God made a vow never to give, and he gave a seal. Never to destroy human race. He said, never, never, never because of God's one man, because of one man's obedience, one man's willingness to live with God, to partner with God, to run the race with God. Run the race with God. And then when it was time to even step out, like just to buttress what we discussed, before it was time to step out, God, Noah heard the word from God. Now, Noah still waited to hear God before he stepped out of the ark. And God's word, he heard God. God said, now you guys can step out. It was a journey of one year and ten days. What a man. Can we wait for how long God wants to wait? Do we want to run with God's agenda with our time? We, oh, fine, we hear him clearly, but do we wait and run with his time, per time, per season, per session? what he wants to do in our life. I, I can only pray that God will help us in the name of Jesus. God will find in us in himself. He will find in us a man that is ready and prepared for every good works. His agenda, we will not be alive on this earth and his agenda will lie follow. And if God will still be looking out, it will not be a portion when God wants to send love, when God wants to send a salvation story, message and all to somebody next door, it will not be difficult for God to penetrate through us and say, my daughter, can you feed my another daughter? You know, when he was saying the parable of uh, the kingdom of God is like this, God will say, do you people go to my right? Do you people go to my left? And you say, you people, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was in prison, you visited me. When I was this and that, when I was naked, you gave me clothes. And he said, and they said, ah, Lord, when you did it, they said, the more you did it to your fellow men, you have done it to me. God is looking for a man he can use to spread his love. Until we make this kingdom of this earth the kingdom of our God, we will not be found wanting in the name of Jesus. His agenda of salvation, his agenda of love, his agenda of peace, his agenda of fire and revival. It will be through us because it will find in us a man he can trust, a man that can carry his heart, a man that can carry his spirit, a man that can run the race exactly like God would do because he has deposited in us his breath, his image, his capacity. Hallelujah. Amen. Wow. Noah's story alive is massively an encouragement for me. And I'm very sure we've been encouraged and blessed with this review. So that's all from my end. I don't know if anybody would like to contribute before we wrap up tonight. Anybody? Anybody? So thank you all for joining. We're going to just pray before we announce, before we do the announcement. Let's pray that God, that you will Finding me a man that can carry your heart, that can carry your desires. Finding me a man that can run with your agenda. Finding me a man every moment you call out to reach out. I will not be found missing. I will not be found wanting. I am a man that leave your agenda on earth, that spread your message, your, your heart. In the name of Jesus anywhere any our lord you want to run you want to, to to reach out to men on this earth you will find in me a spirit your your kind of your kind of 
your, your kind of image, you will find in me a man worthy to run with your vision. You will find Find in me by your mercy a man willing to run the race like Noah, like Abraham, like Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, you will find in us a man. You will find in us a man. You will find in us a man. In the name of Jesus, you will find in us a man until we partner to make this kingdom of this ever kingdom of our God. In the name of Jesus, we are prepared for every good works. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of our God. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining. God bless us. Tomorrow we have, um, we continue the study tomorrow. We're studying the book of Acts chapter 9, the Damascus Road experience. And we are studying um, about our darling brother Paul and leading us to sister Olubukola. We don't want to miss it. It's going to be a beautiful time. Again, call a friend, call a sister, call a family to come and learn at their feet. God bless us. Let us have a wonderful night rest. Okay. The story of not like that of Abraham and other fathers in the faith shows that life in the spirit begins with obedience to God. So good. There's nothing we can leave. We can't walk with God without obedience. So good. Thank you so much. Amen to all our prayers. God bless us too. Six, um, the next prayer watch is 12 a.m. Please let's join. If you're privileged to it, then the next 3 a.m. and then 6 a.m. God bless us. Let's have a wonderful night. Rest. Good night and bye.